Working nine to five, what a way to make a living, barely getting by. It's all taken and no giving, they just use your mind and they never give you credit. It's enough to drive you crazy if you let it. Members of the Army Field Band Six String Soldiers performing at this year's Women's Equality Day observance. Hello and welcome to Meadweek. I'm Brian Spann. More on that story in a moment. Also this week, there's still time to sign up for the 9-11 walk, run, or ruck. There's a community job fair coming up, and the Jazz Ambassadors perform at Constitution Park. These stories and more, but first, much of this week's show focuses on this week's signing of the Fort Meade Community Covenant. The Fort Meade Community Covenant Council is comprised of business, community, and government organizations with an interest in addressing the needs, issues, and concerns of service members, veterans, civilians, and their families in the Fort Meade region. Periodically, the group comes together to reaffirm that interest by signing a community covenant. The last signing took place in 2019 at the opening of the MAPES Access Control Point and the completion of the widening of Maryland 175. This year, the event that brought everyone back together was Fort Meade's formal recognition as a great American defense community. You may remember the initial announcement was released in March. At this week's ceremony, Karen Holt, the president of the Association of Defense Communities, talked about the award and why Fort Meade was named as a great American defense community. I'm president of the Association of Defense Communities. That's a national organization that supports almost 300 uh, defense organizations that have a military post, base, or installation in their, in their own communities. And um, being here to share the Gatsy Award with you really means a lot. And the community makes it a priority to ensure that service personnel, their families, veterans, and DOD civilians protecting our nation are connected and cared for. One major example, is transforming Fort George G. Meade's historic Coon Hall into a modern education and resiliency center. Guest speakers included Davis Tyndall, the Director of Installation Management and Command Sustainment. It's truly an honor for me to be part of this uh, ceremony, to recognize uh, the team, the alliance that you have. Uh, it's impressive. And I've had the opportunity over the past uh, 18 years to serve uh, in different areas, and I've had at least half the Conus installations at one point in time uh, across the United States, and I see alliances similar to this, and I will offer to you uh, in a comparison sense, you got a very strong team. In his remarks, Garrison Commander Colonel Michael Sapp reiterated the importance of community partnerships like the Fort Meade Community Covenant Council. The one thing I can say without a doubt is that successfully running a military installation is only accomplished with the robust support of a strong community. And I'm thrilled to report that one thing that even the pandemic couldn't destroy is their close relationship with and support from the Mead community. Elsewhere this week, the 704th Military Intelligence Brigade hosted this year's Women's Equality Day observance at Club Mead. Women's Equality Day commemorates the 1920 adoption of the 19th Amendment, giving women the right to vote. This year's guest speaker was Dia Drake Sprague, the Director of Education and Outreach at the Maryland Commission on Civil Rights. Laura Fatchel Eric said, well-behaved women seldom make history. I say now is the time for women to be everything but well-behaved. I say it's time to be disorderly for the sake of our civil rights. I know I stand before a room of women who aren't afraid of making a little noise for what's right. Men in the room are not excluded. For your wives, sisters, mothers, daughters, we need you to be our advocates when we aren't in the room. In other news, the Garrison Headquarters Command Battalion is staging a 24-hour walk, run, or ruck. The event starts on Sunday, September 10th at 8.30 a.m. and ends 24 hours later on September 11th. Everyone in the community is invited to join in helping honor those who lost their lives on 9-11. Participants can sign up for time slots in teams of two and 30-minute blocks for a maximum of two hours. And finally this week, members of the Army Field Band's Jazz Ambassadors put on a free concert recently at Constitution Park. They played a half a dozen classics, mostly from the 50s and 60s. Many members of the Jazz Ambassadors and Field Band are on the road more than 100 days every year. Sergeant First Class Jonathan Epley says there's a certain comfort level with playing at home. Normally we are in places where we don't know where we're at or where we're going next. So having that be a sense of familiarity is, I think, calming and makes performing uh, more fun and easier. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Mead Week.